take you now to Kilifi, where with the election cycle now almost subsiding, investors in the real estate are making a comeback to clear up on backlog in order to complete key projects within the set timelines. A case in point is the Sultan Palace real estate project, which is at 90% completion. Here's more. Despite the political uncertainty that has rocked the country for the last three months, property developers had taken a break to take stock of the ongoings that had led to a market slowdown. A visit to Kilifi at the Sultan Palace residential complex paints an all different picture. The project, which is worth 5 billion shillings, is at 90% completion and will be home to high net worth individuals. The project constructed by China Jiangxi Construction Company is targeting affluent Kenyans and visiting billionaire tourists. With most projects stalling in Kikambala area in Kilifi, the Sultan Palace property has defied odds and continues to attract top dollar. The project which targets the upmarket niche has 200 housing units comprising of 80 million shilling villas facing the Indian Ocean. Aside that, there are standalone townhouses each costing 36 million shillings with three two and one bedroom departments valued at 10 to 20 million shillings ready for occupation. According to the assistant project manager at Sultan, Howard Hu, investment was informed by a rising demand for gated community beach houses within Kenya's Whiteson coastline, a much sought after destination by billionaire tourists. During construction, the company engaged 500 workers and several professional gardeners and swimming coaches, as well as a full-time gym instructor, have since been hired to serve the newly settled resident community. Residents at Sultan Palace will enjoy benefit from an in-house gym, spa, cafe, restaurant, resident club. The facility will also have nine residents-only swimming pools, with 11 private pools constructed for each villa facing the ocean. Well, we want to take a look at uh, some of the top trending stories across the world, and one of them being the desire by Disney to acquire Fox. And this is considered as one of the major deals that could go down history. We're talking about 52 billion US dollars. That translates to about 5.4 trillion Kenya shillings. Well, Walt Disney has actually struck a deal with uh, Fox. And um, Robert, Robert Murdoch will be the man to watch as he continues to diversify his business in the very lucrative industry. Well, the next aspect we want to take a look at is in regard to the South African RAND, which has continued to make a strong uh, comeback, really. And uh, we've seen uh, the South African RAND dipped in early trade. And uh, this has uh, uh, actually seen uh, uh, avoided, uh, investors have avoided taking large positions and braced for the outcome of the ruling of African National Congress leadership elections on the weekend. In the previous session, the currency climbed to a one week best as bearish sentiment eased after the current account deficit narrowed slightly in the third quarter, pointing to a continued economic recovery after a recession in the first half of the year. The currency, however, lost some momentum in Asian trade and low liquidity also kept the currency within recent range. Well, finally, we want to take you to Nigeria, where the government will be setting aside $1 billion, uh, that is about 100 billion Kenyan shillings, from a special account for all revenue savings to boost its war against Boko Haram Islamist militants in the country's northeast. Governors of the country's 36 states met with the federal government as the National Economic Council to deliberate on the expenditure. According to Godwin Obaseki, the governor of Southern Edo State, Boko Haram militants who are opposed to Western education and seek to impose their version of Islamic law in Nigeria are in the eighth year of their insurgency that has left at least 20,000 people dead. According to the government, President Muhammadu Buhari won elections in 2015 with the defeat of the group among his key campaign promises. Well, we want to wrap up the program on that note, and uh, it's been a pleasure bringing you the day's business news with 
interesting conversations from our different uh, analysts and guests. Well, that's where we leave it at. My name is Abi Gina. Do have yourself.